There is only one perfect solution, but there are clues that will try to trick our team. Hello there, everyone. My name is Crazy Caleb, and welcome to $30 module, or don't you lecture me with your $30 module. It's just called $30 module. Um, so what we have here is we have a series of, um, in this case, the bottom display will have a series of 12 different symbols that you can uh, cycle from left to right here um, with a bunch of these other ones. And we're going to have five uh, little buttons at the top here. We're going to have a play button, which will be our submit, so don't do that quite yet. And we've got an X, uh, which will effectively be our reset for when we input stuff in. So for this bottom display, we can input um, different types of things. If we select one, for example, um, uh, we can simply just re uh, re uh, uh, swap it in with something else, and we can simply just get rid of them. But in this case, it will start off default by going from left to right, so just be very aware of that. So let's have a look and let's see what we can do here. So how exactly does this module work? So what we're gonna have is we're going to have a soundboard of 204 sounds with each sound represented by an emoji. So um, we're gonna press some of the, we're gonna take the note of the five sounds the module played with these upper tiles above. And we're gonna find their corresponding emojis in the $30 table. I'm simply just skipping over this one because um, this is just the way that, the, this is the input stuff that I just showed you guys. So, the five emojis will form a hexagon in a table with one of the vertices missing. When finding the hexagon shape, the table does not wrap around. So if we take a look at this table here, what we're gonna do is we're going to try and find a hexagon where one of the spots is missing. So let's have a listen and let's see if we can identify the sounds, which I'm gonna be using the interactive by the way. Uh, so thank you for Luminosity Tim. We salute you for making the interactive so quickly. And it's just, it is quite great to use. So. So a lot of these sounds are going to be very iconic. They're going to be um, very recognizable in this case. There's going to be some honking from Unsettled Goose Game. Uh, you might know the bell. Obviously, that's a classic. Vine Boom, of course. Uh, and for example, the hit marker for Call of Duty. <laughs> you gotta love that hit marker. So let's have a listen. And of course, there is, of course, silence. As a, silence is always a valid option, too. That's also a Telltale game reference that I just accidentally made. So, each of these five sounds is going to play a sound. We need to find its corresponding emoji to it, and it's going to form a hexagon. So let's have a listen. Okay, so that is a, uh, a notification sound. It's not it. Nope, not that one. Um, it should be some kind of notification. Um, there should be another one, I think, around here. This whistle notification. Yep, that's the exact same. So we're going to be looking at this phone icon. Um, so it's going to be right over here. Perfect. Now let's have a listen to the next one. Okay. Um, I think I know that one. I just listened to that. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, oh, God. Some of these sounds are a little weird when they're, like, out of context like this. So, I just, it, it, it does sound kind of weird. Um... God, I know I've heard this somewhere. And in cases where you don't know what the sound exactly is, you can try and find the ones that are more familiar. So I'm gonna skip over this one for the time being. Let's have a listen. Okay, uh, this one I know, I think. It's like a slide. This is the slip, yes, the slip. That makes sense, so it's gonna be the banana peel. So where is the banana? So it's over here. Okay, let's have a listen to the next one. Okay. Is that Zaytoven? Ah! Nope, that's not it. <laughs> it's a very different scream. <laughs> um, uh, let's have a listen. Scream. Is it that? Ah! Nope, that's not it. <laughs> um, oh God, what is that? I don't know that one. <laughs> and let's listen to the last one. Oop. That is, of course, oop, from Zai. Oop, oop. Oop. <laughs> so let's find oop right here. Okay, and I can start to see a forming of a hexagon here, and I have belief that it is likely gonna be something like this and like this. Um, so let's listen to the sound and let's see if I can identify any of these. So let's find the dog one. Where's that dog? Uh, if I can find it. That's a different kind of dog. 
Where is that dog? Ah! That's the one. So yeah, dog dancing, we know speak Americana. So that's the one that I found. And there's, it's gonna be between this uh, little angry face one. It was not that. And it's gonna be between this toad face. Where's the toad face? Oh. Uh. That's not what it was. So uh, let me have a listen. And it actually could potentially be over here too. So, not Pierre. Um, it doesn't actually loop around, so this is interesting where this could be. It could also just be here and here, potentially, as well, or something simple like that. So, is it the pufferfish? <laughs> yeah, it's the pufferfish. So now, we know for a fact that our missing vertex is right here. So what exactly do we do with this information? So, we take a note of the five sounds played, and we know where the missing vertex is. So now, using the point on the table of the missing vertex, we need to create a new hexagon using the same dimensions as the other one, with the aforementioned vertex being diametrically opposite of the uh, being the diametrically opposite vertex on the new hexagon. So what this effectively means is we're going to create a new hexagon, and it's going to be the diametrically opposite position. So in this case, the diametrically opposite position from in this case the down position is simply just going to be the up position. If it were diametrically opposite with these guys, it would effectively be top left going to bottom right, they might go vice versa, and bottom left going to top right, for example. So, what this effectively means is that this becomes, this green vertex becomes our top, uh, and I'm going to mark this in red, um, and we now need to create a new hexagon with the same shape. So here, here, with these new, with these new dimensions here, uh, we're going to go down three spaces, we're going to go down three spaces and we're going to go right over here. So now effectively what we need to do now is we need to submit these five new vertices into our answer into these specific slots. Now what order do we submit these in? So when you're ready to submit an answer, uh, press the play button, in this case we'll get back to that, we're going to enter the emojis in, of this new hexagon into the module starting with the first vertex clockwise after the missing vertex, but not including the missing one and proceed in a clockwise order around the new hexagon. So we're gonna start from, um, I believe this is Goku. You know my uh, Dragon Ball Z characters, but I don't, because I'm, I'm an absolute moron. Um, <laughs> so we need to go clockwise from this one, which is gonna take us to that screaming symbol that we had recently beforehand that we thought was the answer, but it's not. So in this case, that's gonna be where we start, and then we're gonna proceed clockwise with the rest of these guys. Now, one, way, one thing that we can help determine with this table is that each table, uh, each um, display that, we, that we're given is going to represent a row. So we just need to figure out where we are in a row, which is right here. And we can simply move up and down to make this life easier for us. So if we go left twice, which will go make us go up, we can now use this symbol here. Oh, we want to make sure that we select the correct option here. So we'll start here. Okay. So we'll now go down to the last symbol. I guess what you could also do is you could also just simply enter a number five here as well. So if we do this, this will be our last symbol right here. Let's go down at two spaces, uh, or down to three in this case. Let's go to this one. I believe this one is the is the blue option. Yep. Um, this will be number two. Okay. And then this heart rate mark will be number four. <laughs> and then if we go down one more time, selecting this option, we now have everything in order that we want to do. So now all we simply need to do is simply hit the play button. Don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. <laughs> and just like that is a solved module. So yeah, I think it's a very fun module. I think it's one of the best that SBIG has made for sure. Uh, and it's a very decent and simple puzzle. And it's a throwback to a bunch of very good sounds. So um, this actually is based off of a the thirty dollar module website. Um, so special thanks to GD, uh, GD Colon for creating the website uh, and being the inspiration for this module. It is quite clever how this works. Uh, I like this a lot. Um, and I'm willing to do one more. Let's see what funky sounds we get. <laughs> so some of the sounds are a little bit weird when you hear them unexpectedly, I will say. <laughs> but overall, I think it's just a very, very solid module.
but let's see if we can get an example where the top left and the, like like the top left and bottom right swap or the bottom right and top left or the top right and bottom left swap that would be a good example but in this case for diagonally opposite effectively what happens is just the top and bottom swap in this case so uh let's have a look Amogus. okay <laughs> that is amogus so now there are several amogus related sounds um in this case and this one is going to be the amogus amogus yeah that's the amogus one this is going to be you that little bugger down there next up I know that one. It's gotta be some, from some game. Um, any one of these? No. I don't quite see it. Uh, we'll come back to it. Uh, glass. It sounds like glass. Um, that's not it. Um, last shatter? That's not the same. Okay. Um, oh, jeez, what is that one? They're definitely throwing some complicated ones at me, for sure. I think that one is a Minecraft sound, though. Yeah, that's chime. Yep, that's a note block. So we need the chime block, which is right here. Okay, this is actually quite a small hexagon then. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, wait, let me make sure I highlighted the right thing. Uh, the chime one, yeah, it's the ice block, so it's, it's close to the end, so that makes sense. Um, it could possibly be that just this Amogus is our missing vertex too. That, that is a possibility. Um, let's keep looking. Um, I don't really even know what that could be. Hmm. I'm committed to it now, so I have to keep looking. Um. No, that's not it. Yeah, I don't know what it could be. That's not it. Um. Nope. Um. I have no idea what that sound could even be. Sounds like a ding, in a way. That's the Binding of Isaac, it's not what I want. <laughs> ding! No, that's not... <laughs> that's not what I'm looking for at all. Why, could it be a note block? There we go. I, I don't know my Celeste sound, sorry. Y'all you, can roast me in the chat. But that's a dash gem, so that's gonna help us a lot. Um, where is the dash gem? Um, there it is. Oh, okay, this will be a really weird hexagon. Um, okay, what else could it even be? Could it be one of these guys? Yeah, that's that. Okay. Oh, what the hell? Okay, this is a really funky, funky looking hexagon. And now I need to figure out where this sound is. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Almost sounds like a chime in a way. 
Oh, no, no. I figured out that. This is the one I need to figure out. Okay. Alright. Oh, it's Magic from Terraria. Right, that's another game I haven't played enough of, so it's a star. Okay, there it is. Oh, what a weird hexagon for a second. Okay, so now we know our missing vertex is right over here. So therefore, now we run into a case where we need to now diagonally switch. Because uh, remember, we need to um, we need to treat this as the top right in this case. If that means we need. And now, here's the part where things get a little bit weird because it wraps around. So the first one originally, um, in this case, uh, when finding the hexagon shape, the table does not wrap around. But now, for this case, the new hexagon can wrap around. The new hexagon can wrap around. So this is where things get a little bit interesting. So this is the top right. And now what we need to do is we now need to highlight, um, going up here, this one, this one. Um, it's three to the left. This one, this one, and this one. So yeah, it's a very, that's a very interesting one to land on. So, and remember now, so in order to submit this module, we need to play the, um, we need to put the first symbol, the one that is clockwise, from this point. So in this case, that would be the hand clap. So let's go up there. Bit of a ways to go. Uh, two more. Yep, here we go. So the first one's going to be the hand The fifth one is going to be, uh, the fourth one, excuse me, is going to be silence. So let's go there. So we'll leave that blank. Um, let's go down one row. This second one's going to be an X. And the fourth, uh, and the third is going to be, uh, the cricket bat. And then the fifth one is going to be a wooden block. So let's go left. It does loop around. It should. Yep. And a wooden block. And let's play. Don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. And just like that is a solid one. So yeah. Sometimes the hexagons can be a little bit weird, the shapes can be a little bit funky, but overall, very easy module to do, and a very fun one, and just overall a lot of fun to hear a bunch of these different sounds. Um, but for those who have not played some of these games, it is going to be a little bit tricky, but if you can figure out at least a couple, that's going to give you a better idea of where it's located at. So, um, as always, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, stay crazy, stay cool, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>